We just want to thank everyone for joining us here today um, at HeartSmart. Uh, to do a few introductions, my name is Megan Fugano, and I am a product manager for our first aid and safety products. And also on camera here is Heidi Felix, who is the VP of Sales and Marketing for LifeBack. Uh, we're both super excited to be able to give you guys this demo today. Um, LifeBack is such a neat product, super cool, super innovative. Um, and Heidi's going to show you guys how it's saved, how many lives it already has saved and how it continues to save lives. Um, but before we jump into the presentation, there are just a few things I need to note. Um, first being um, all attendees here are actually going to be entered into a chance to win a free LifeBack home kit. Uh, we're going to be drawing at random at the end of the presentation. So as long as you're still present, um, you have the opportunity to win a LifeBack home kit. And the second thing to note is that if you do have any questions or comments during the presentation, just please type them into the chat box. Um, and when we get to the Q&A portion of the presentation, um, we'll make sure we get to your question and answer those. So I think that's everything I need to say. So Heidi, I'm going to let you take it from here. Oh, Heidi, you're muted. Hey, Heidi, you're muted. Thank you so much for letting me know and thank you so much for letting me present today. Uh, really thrilled to be a partner with HeartSmart and really to tell you a little bit more about LifeVac. So what is LifeVac? It's not only the name of our company, but it is the only product that we sell. It is a portable, non-invasive airway clearance device that's used to rescue a choking victim. If anybody in the crowd has ever had a choking emergency, you can raise your hand because I have to tell you, I'm sure everyone's ever um, if you've ever experienced a choking emergency yourself or you've been witness to it, it is a very scary situation. So um, one of the things that we want to talk about is really all about LifeVac and the fact that we're made in the USA is a really important point. I think we're all feeling very patriotic these days, right? Um, and the fact that we make our product right here in New York, we are outside of New York City in Long Island, for any of you who are familiar with Long Island, we're out in Suffolk County. And we produce these products, we manufacture them, and we distribute them right here from my headquarters. You see me sitting in front of a wall. This is our hall of saves. And I am surrounded by the faces of all the lives that we've saved. So we're gonna go into that in a little bit more detail, but I wanted to share some more information all about the history of LifeVac. So our inventor is a father. Arthur Lee is our CEO. He invented LifeVac after, um, Kind of a crazy story. He was visiting a friend in the hospital and his friend told this story and he pointed to an empty gurney in the hospital emergency room and he said this seven-year-old boy came in here, full airway obstruction, choking on a grape, EMTs, doctors, no one could save this child. And they witnessed this happening. Um, Arthur had a child the same age as Jackie, and he said, I couldn't sleep at night. He said, I literally searched the internet, trying to find something that would be able to help me rescue my child. And in his inquiries with the doctors, he said, you know, why couldn't the airway um, be cleared? And I mean, they literally had, a, by that point, they had um, cut open the child's throat and he was brain dead. And it's such a horrible story. And I tell you this story because that is really the reason why our company exists today. Arthur was a retired professional. He didn't need to invent this product, but he was on a mission to save his own child. After he had done all his due diligence and his research and come up with a product that he knew would work, Think about it from the perspective of anybody ever had a clogged drain? What do you use to unclog a drain? A plunger. He literally kept it so simplistic so that in an emergency, any parent, any person, doesn't have to be someone that is a medical professional would be able to save their own child. He also received a patent for this device. So this device that I'm holding in my hands is the LifeVac suction device. There is a one-way valve and that patent um, is important to note because when you push down on this plunger, the air vents out through this patented design. So there is no air being forced into the trachea to push the object further down. Really important point, especially in an airway emergency. You wanna be able to remove the obstruction, not push it further in. Um, one of the great things is, and as I mentioned, the Hall of Saves, the pictures you see behind me, we have saved 152 lives 
and it's incredible and so inspirational when I can look at these faces of people of all ages. We've saved as little as a three-day-old newborn. Not exactly what we would re recommend as a manufacturer because our mask, that's a pediatric mask, is really intended for 22 pounds and above. However, the people that did save their child were both EMTs. They purchased the product to help them because they had older children in addition to their newborn. And the children always love to put everything in their mouths. If you're a parent, you know this. Um, so they actually had ordered the product specifically for the older kids and ended up using it when their child had vomit and mucus completely obstructing the airway. What they did is they used it in an unconventional method. They actually compressed the suction unit and that allowed them to use the mask over the child and then released it to be able to remove all of the, um, again, phlegm and mucus that was in child, the child's throat. Um, but we've also saved everyone all the way up to 97 years old. And the pretty remarkable thing is, as I had mentioned before, the inspiration behind this company was Jackie, who is Arthur's daughter. Um, the first life that was saved was saved by a nurse named Jackie in the United Kingdom. So we're, um, thrilled about that. And the fact is that it was a person who would have died. They were choking on coleslaw, full airway obstruction, very frail, in a wheelchair, could not use the abdominal and um, what we call basic life support. Um, the Heimlich maneuver, as you know it, could not be used. And thank the Lord, that person is still alive. And Jackie was the one who saved him, the nurse. So our mission is to eliminate choking as one of the leading causes of death. It's a very big ask. And one of the things that Arthur asked me to do when I joined his mission was we need to save a million lives. So we need your support, you know, as parents, as professionals, as people that care about others. We want to save a million lives. And this is a video that went viral. And this is a mother who contacted us to let us know that she saved her two year old in a choking emergency. Um, if any of you have ever pictured this yourselves, right? You put your kids in front of the TV, give them a little snack. You don't think anything of it, right? Not a great idea for a little two-year-old. So this little boy starts choking. The other boy, who's the older brother, tells mommy he's choking, mommy. So the next thing you know, she runs in. She removes him from the high chair because she wants to try what um, is, you know, protocol, right? Basic life support protocol is to be doing back blows. It's kind of like a baby sandwich is what you call it in CPR. And um, so she tries and attempts the back blows, realizes she has the life back right there. She, you know, realizes that this airway is not, it's not being cleared. She can't get her son to breathe. So she's grabbed her life back. What she did is she kept it assembled with a pediatric mask in there, not something that I recommend. And I'll tell you in a moment why, because what if it was an older person that needed to be saved? She was very lucky. Um, the little boy, her um, again, immediately she lays her child down here places the mask over his face. The other little boy's going, mommy, mommy, 911, 911. She, he's been instructed, obviously, that's what he's supposed to do. And he's going to call. So the mother is at this point, she's calming down her child who's crying. She said she never heard such a beautiful cry. <laughs> she was um, obviously thrilled to know that she was able to um, help this child, which was her own, obviously, and save him in that choking emergency. So, you know, again, she did, share that with us because she felt it was really important that parents know how easy it is and how um, seamless it is to use the life vac and that it always works. Um, you know, we're on this mission to eliminate choking tragedies, period. I talk to people all the time who have gone through horrible situations that didn't have a happy ending. So we want to eliminate this as one of the leading causes of accidental death in children under 14. Another important point is that one child dies every five days. And as far as I'm concerned, that's unacceptable. We um, got a phone call from a family who had they have known about LifeVac, their child would be alive today. And the EMTs did not arrive in time. Their child, unfortunately, was brain dead by the time that they did arrive and had gone into cardiac arrest. So these are the sad stories that we don't want to hear anymore. We want this word to spread throughout the world. Um, so it is one of the leading causes of accidental death. And it's something that happens even in the over 65 population is one of the leading causes of death. So 
important to note, it's not just for children, it's not just for parents, it is for everyone. So one of the things I think that they don't tell you when you're going through a CPR class is that choking protocol fails to remove the airway obstruction about 50% of the time for a lay person. And that's an important point because I don't think any of us are aware that it may not work. And that may not work because you're not doing it properly. Um, sometimes when you are doing the Heimlich properly or the abdominal thrust, you literally can hurt someone. And that's where you can cause damage. Um, you could crack ribs, you could puncture lungs. There is definitely um, things that can happen, unfortunately. But one of the things that we're very passionate about is making sure that you're aware that people who are developmentally disabled, cerebral palsy, Down syndrome, even autistic children um, have a high tendency to choke. Unfortunately, it is um, something that happens because of the developmental and muscle delays. And you cannot perform abdominal thrust on somebody in a wheelchair. Have you ever looked at a choking poster to show you what to do in an emergency? So, you know, taking someone out of a wheelchair, if they're frail or if they're large for that matter, could be minutes and it also could cause them to go into cardiac arrest. Very important point. It happened down at our VA Medical Center. Um, one of the nurses watched one of her beloved patients who was choking on pizza, by the way, cheese that his sister had brought in um, and they couldn't get him out of the wheelchair in enough time. He was a, a large man. They couldn't perform the Heimlich on him and he died in front of them. So again, these are tragedies that we want to eliminate these in the future. Um, it really is the best option if protocol that is, again, basic life support is abdominal thrust and back blows. When it doesn't work, what do you do? You need another option to remove that airway obstruction. Life act will simulate what your body would want to do naturally. Your body wants to expel any foreign object. So you typically cough, right? If you've ever swallowed water, swallowed something that you shouldn't, your body wants to expel that. So this unit, the life act, will actually simulate what you would be able to do had you had the ability to have air behind that obstruction. The one-way valve, as I had mentioned, will never force something further into the trachea and it will vent the air, but it will give you the maximum suction so that when it's released, it will automatically suck out whatever the obstruction is. One little boy, he was very cute. He, he told us the story about the broccoli that was sucked out of his throat by the life back. And he said, I could feel it and it wasn't scary. So again, it's not something that could ever hurt someone. And you know, again, it will always remove the airway obstruction. You can go to the next slide. One of the things people always ask me is, you know, how much is the cost? Is it affordable? Well, first of all, we, developed this device and made it last forever. There's no expiration date on it. The only thing that you may need to replace is the masks. And you know those masks come with a unit, pediatric mask and adult mask, um, but they may deflate over time. It depends on the kind of conditions that you keep it in. Obviously, we're in a climate controlled area here. However, people like to keep their travel kits in their cars. So I'm um, very important that the only thing that may need to be replaced is the masks. The other thing is, if you ever do use it in a choking emergency, that LifeVac will replace the unit at no cost. What we do ask is that we take a clinical report. Every single life that we have documented is documented what was the airway obstruction, what was the person, um, the age, if they had any um, illnesses, Parkinson's, um, autism, anything that may have caused that choking incident to happen. So that clinical report is now filed with, not only um, kept it in our own company, but that is also filed with the FDA, ILCOR, and MHRA, who are the governing agencies over American Heart Association. And we are an international company, by the way. So we've saved 152 lives to date since we did this presentation. Um, the good news is we had two more lives saved. And one of the most recent was really amazing. It was actually an assistant fire chief in Alabama got a call about a three-year-old choking. The parents tried Heimlich. Everything that they tried did not work. They called 911. He was the first responder on the site. He had his own life back. Right? So he took his own life back with him on the call. And again, here is an, you know fire chief, he's the EMS instructor. This man knows Heimlich, it did not work. And they were actually able to remove the airway obstruction, which was a remarkable thing with his very own life back. So nothing like uh, taking something that's your own personal thing on a call and saving a life. 
Um, so again, it's simple, it's effective, it's non-invasive, very important point. In the world that we live in today, we've all learned to live with masks, right? Placing a mask over our face isn't a scary thing any longer. Um, and it is portable and it is non-powered. So all those things are very powerful things to really differentiate us from everybody else. Um, we also went through a lot of studies and a lot of testing before we actually launched this product, but some of the most recent peer-reviewed studies demonstrate that LifeAc is safe and effective 100% of the time. And this is a very important study that was done um, by Resuscitation Plus and Scientific Data. I actually can provide this information to you, but it shows that LifeAc worked 100% of the time. It never failed. However, when they did the basic life support or the Heimlich, it only works 71% of the time. And they were trained professionals. That study was conducted by ILCOR, who is now exploring LifeAc as another option in BLS protocol. Stay tuned on that. Um, LifeAc is currently implemented right now in schools. That's our passion. We want to make sure that all those children are safe in their school districts. But again, first responders, I couldn't emphasize that enough. You know, certainly the story I just told you about our most recent save, but we have a number of police and EMTs that have saved lives. And not only have they saved others' lives, but they've saved their own families' lives, which is really remarkable. And those two youngest saves that we have, a little three-week-old, she's right behind me, um, and as well, the little three-day-old were both saved by their parents who were EMTs. We also are very passionate about helping out people in assisted living facilities and nursing care facilities because they're very vulnerable. As we get older, my mother has dementia, right? We don't have the ability to swallow as, um, and we don't have the, the same skills. It's almost like we have to relearn all the things that we knew as a child. Um, so those are important things to point out that they are vulnerable, they are frail, many of them are in wheelchairs. So we wanna see life back implemented there. Um, we started out with our alliance with the New York State PTA because the executive director um, truly believes in our product. In addition to the fact that she actually was a choking victim twice, she was an EMS fire chief up in Albany, and while she was in her firehouse in eating lunch, she started choking and they could not remove the airway obstruction with BLS. They couldn't remove it with the laryngoscope or the forceps. Um, so they ended up, sorry, with the forceps, they ended up using the laryngoscope in order to remove the um, general chose chicken from her throat. Her husband also saved her from the, um, using the Heimlich, which she had instructed him how to do. But she's one of the lucky ones, right? Because it was trained professionals that were working on her. And she said, Heidi, this is a product that needs to be in every single school. She's been a huge advocate for us. So we're really thrilled about that alliance. I wanna show you a demo, and this is going to demonstrate the actual use of the product. And again, keeping in mind, it's simple and it's effective. Here is uh, airway obstruction in the trachea. And now at this point, this patient is lying down. They've gone unconscious. You wanna tilt the head back a bit and then place the life back over the bridge of the nose and cover the mouth completely. Um, we call it a CE clamp that you are going to use in order to make sure that it does not come up. It has proper suction and you can place push pull, but you can keep doing that as many times as you need to in order to remove the airway obstruction. 100% effective, it's never failed. Now, the LifeVac is the LifeVac. It's, it's in different kits and each of the different kits is equipped differently. So the home kit is really um, an adult mask, it's the suction unit, it's a pediatric mask with a supplemental practice mask. The practice mask is important. It comes with instructions for use. Those instructions for use are very clearly outlined for a lay person. So they tell them exactly what they need to do in order to perform a rescue. Um, and that practice mask, we tell everybody use it, show your spouses, show your babysitters, show anyone else in your staff if you're using it for a company. Um, make sure everyone knows how to use it and then dispose of the practice mask. The practice mask is essentially just an extra adult mask. And again, that is only with the home kit. The travel kit comes with an adult and a pediatric mask. So one kit covers your entire family. And you know that's something for on the go. I love my little travel kit. I keep it with me everywhere. God forbid we ever have a choking emergency. Um, but it is a nice portable travel bag. Uh, I always tell everybody keep in mind environmental conditions. If you live down in Florida or in Texas or where there's extreme heat, certainly um, you know, be careful about leaving it in the car you know, for too long a period of time. 
The EMS kit is specifically designed for people who are emergency, um, they're trained in CPR. There's not an extensive amount of instructions in there, though there is a simple instruction kit in there, and it only comes with an adult and a pediatric mask, no supplemental practice mask. Now, the school kit is specifically designed for a campus environment. Um, campuses obviously have, you know, the home kit. We, typically ask them to put it into the home, um, excuse me, into the office so that the home kit has the practice mask to train all the staff members. We also have um, the three EMS kits that come along with that. Um, again, the EMS kits, keeping in mind, they don't have extra practice masks. We'll typically go into the cafeteria, the nurse's office, perhaps the teacher's lounge, if that's where food is being served, as well as the phys ed office, because they're always trained on um, not only BLS, but advanced life support as well. And the school kit should be put wherever an AED is, right? Near and dear to your hearts. Think about our kit as another tool in your toolbox for you to be able to use for first aid. Now it's time for you guys to ask us questions. So I thank you for your time in the presentation. Really looking forward to hearing, oh, you could not hear me? I heard you could not hear the speaker. Um, Sorry I about think Heidi, she was able to figure that out. But uh, thank you for giving that presentation. So yeah, we're gonna open up to the Q&A section now. So again, reminder, just type those into the chat box and we will make sure to get to them. Um, we have a few that have already come through. So first question is if you could talk about whether um, you should always use traditional Heimlich first and then use um, the life back if that doesn't work. Well, I want to follow the American Heart Association, American Red Cross protocol, right? Until we change protocol, which we're working on, by the way, um, we are working with ILCOR, which is the international organization that oversees all um, basic life support internationally. And we are an international company, by the way. We're in over 40 countries. So um, we always say, try abdominal thrusts try back blows. It can't hurt you if you're doing it the right way. If it does not work, however, always life back as a backup plan. Um, we've had at least two of our saves. The, the parents said that they went directly to the life back. Um, and again, these are two parents that were all EMTs. Okay, so keeping in mind, they knew that they had attempted the Heimlich and it had not worked. So they jumped right to the life back. Um, and that's a beautiful thing. That's a testimonial to us. But we're going to stick to American Red Cross, American Heart, say try abdominal thrust, try back blows, if they don't work, life act never fails. Okay. I hope that answered your question. Um, the next question is, what can you talk about what the difference between being FDA registered and FDA approved is? Sure. So Life Act, when we were coming up with a product in pre-market conditions, you have to apply to the FDA because it's a medical apparatus. And when you apply to the FDA, they review the product, they review your studies, they review all the information that you supply. The FDA came back to us and told us that our product is classified as a class two medical apparatus. It's basically like, again, another tool in your toolkit in the first aid kit. Um, it is non-invasive. Um, not like an EpiPen where you're injecting somebody with um, a drug, right? It's non-invasive. So therefore, it's a class two, which does not require FDA approval. And they gave us FDA registration. And that is given to us directly by the FDA. When we asked if we needed to pursue going for approval, they said it wasn't necessary for our class two medical apparatus. And that's okay. why we're FDA registered. Um, we're hyper vigilant, though, by the way, on compliance. And that's why we keep every one of our clinical reports and uh, we always are sharing that information with ilcor mhra for again the international organizations just like the american heart association um and we also share that with the fda we keep everything on file because truth in advertising is important right so when we say there's 152 lives that were saved that these people would have died if if life act did not exist and was not there for them they would have died and that's an important point specifically, um, and again, related to us as a medical apparatus, and it is not necessary to be approved, registration sufficient, according to the FDA. Okay, great. And then can you talk about um, whether the pediatric mask has an age range for it? 
Sure. I mean, a lot of people ask me the question because the pediatric mask, um, it says 22 pounds and above in the instructions. And as I had mentioned before, there's those two tiny babies behind me um, that were actually saved by life back and kind of a non-traditional method. Um, the, it's not so much an age range as it is a weight range, right? Keeping in mind that um, there are some babies that are that come out five pounds, some babies come out 10 pounds. And as we grow, we grow at different rates. So sometimes a baby may be 22 pounds and six months old, right? You don't know, and there's not an age. It's really the weight of the child. What I always suggest to everyone who's purchasing it and they ask that question, I say, try the mask on your child first. Try it, see what fits more appropriately. Because um, again, we all grow at different rates and also faces, it's really your face. It's not so much your weight per se, but your face does definitely, um, the shape of your face and so forth. And that plays into what mask is more appropriate for each person. I've had adults who said that the pediatric mask fit better for them. Go figure, if you're that tiny. Okay, and we just got a question um, from Denise. She said she works with disabled adults, uh, most are in wheelchairs. So does someone need to hold the head um, in back since it is place push pull or how much pressure is needed? Oh, that's such a great question. Actually, um, we some of our most recent saves were actually people in wheelchairs and they were at um, nursing care facilities. What we ask is that some, yes, if we do believe and in most wheelchairs for the disabled have a back um, backrest, right? So you would lean the person back, tilt their head, um, just a little bit and you place this over and again dominant hand so if you're right-handed use your dominant hand and then I hope you can hear that um, you can actually hear it suctioning out so mm -hmm. you would definitely want to if possible support their head but it is not a lot of pressure you know it's it's literally just keeping um, the seal on the face is probably the most important thing as you're pushing down on the life back does that make sense? Yep. Denise? And then uh, I think the final question is if you could talk about whether life back can be used on oneself or if you have any stories of it being used on oneself. We do have some great stories. So one of the gentlemen who contacted us to let us know that at his son's seventh birthday, he started choking on steak. And his wife tried the Heimlich at least three times. It didn't work. Um, it was full on airway obstruction. He literally assembled the kit himself. He put the mask on because the mother had kept the pediatric mask on thinking she'd be using it for her child, right? He assembled the mask while he was choking, put it on his face, full beard, and it was like a six inch beard, he said, and he was able to get a perfect seal. He used it on himself and removed the piece of steak. And he said it was just remarkable, you know, just being able to do it on himself. Um, but we've actually had two saves that they did it on themselves. And that's a really important point. For anybody who lives alone, what do you do? If you have an airway obstruction, you can't speak, you can't call 911. And so it's really important to protect those people that are most vulnerable, or now certainly disabled, but people who live alone as well. I okay. That answers your question. Yeah, it's great. So I think that's gonna conclude our Q&A section. Um, so now to announce the winner of the free Life Back Home Kit, the winner is Keith Kleins. Keith, I'm sorry if I just butchered your last name there, but make sure you stay online because we're going to be messaging you um, for your contact information so we can get sent that uh, Life Back Home Kit out to you. Um, so Heidi, thank you again for coming on here and giving all this really great information. I hope everyone enjoyed it. Um, I think on behalf of HeartSmart team and the Life Back team, um, we're really excited you joined us here today again. And on the screen right now is contact information for HeartSmart. So if you have any questions or need anything, please feel free to call us, email us. Um, we'll be able to answer all of your questions. Um, so everyone enjoy the rest of your day and thanks again for joining the LifeBack customer demo. Thank you so much for having me. Have a great day. God bless. Yep. Thanks, Heidi.